This is the Game Gestures Gaming Update Podcast here with episode 37. We finished up the decade. We finished up the year. We finished up the decade. Now we are back with uh, we're going to go through like we told you in our last podcast. We're going in to this one with um, or uh, decade in review. We're going to start this podcast off with uh, we're going to go back and forth between our top 10 of games for the decade. But before Which we do is that, 2010 to 2019, for yeah. those of you who don't know what the last decade was, because yeah. some people don't know, I'm not making this up. <laughs> Beginning of 10 and the end of 19, 10 years. Before that, some little highlights. We now, I want to go back and May 2018, I first started this podcast with the Game Fame Cup podcast. We did that for a little bit, and then August 5th is when Shamrock joined me and we changed it to the Game Gestures podcast. So we've been going as the Game Gestures for 37 episodes since August 5th of 2018 is when we started. We're coming close to our full on two. We're going to be going on three. We're going to keep on going. We've been going for a few years now. Yes. Yes. What? Well, because well, we're on what? Episode, 30, episode 37 here now, but then... Last year, we kicked it up into gear, and then now, here we are, starting off 2020, back to our bi-weekly episodes, because we had a little bit of a break, because uh, things had slow. Gaming news slows down, like, right before the Game Awards, and everything, like, right after everything, E3 hits, and everything, yeah. like, gets released, and things slow down, and it's like... <laughs> before E3, E3, we get a lot before E3, then right after E3, everything is out there, so we didn't have a whole lot of news that week, then that oh, yeah. whole month. Now, now, now we have so much to talk about in the next... Not to get too far off track here, but we have so much to talk about in the next upcoming weeks, because PlayStation 5 is on the horizon. Hint, hint. <laughs> uh, yeah, see what I did there? I uh, Xbox, Xbox Series X is now the thing. Now there's a rumor of a potential Nintendo Switch Pro. I mean, there's a oh, lot that... Oh, the Wii Switch, potential... Switch, Switch U? Switch with what? <laughs> the Wii Switch, Switch U? The Wii, Wii Switch U. Wow, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> the, the Wii, 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 Wii Switch, Switch U. U. I feel like we could make that. Warrior, 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 Bo- yes, I'm already done. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, moving back so, on to our... Uh... Top 10 uh, games of the yeah. decade. I'm... The going to i'll let you start with your number one or what we're going 10 10, we're going 10 down the one so all right er, so before i get into my number 10 let me just say i do have a few honorable mentions because i did say it was really hard to only pick 10 because like when i was ranking them i almost had like a list of like 30 and then i had to like be like oh you know what i gotta remove this so before we do number one We'll throw our honorable mm-hmm. mentions right after. We'll do two, and then we'll put all our honorable mentions, and then we'll do our last, our top number one okay, game. Okay, we could do our honorable mentions that way. Yeah. We could do it that way. Yeah, we could do it that way. But I do have honorable mentions. But all right, so we'll go into number 10. For me, was uh, Life is Strange. I thought Strange. the first one. I didn't play the second one. But the first one, I, I love the story. It, and I, I'm not really a fan of these types of games, like these, you know story choose your adventure choose what you do kind of games they kind of do get boring to a point but this one it grasped my interest for so long the whole butterfly effect thing i was hooked i loved it and i'm so glad it got so much uh uh, you know it got so much critical acclaim and then it won all these awards and then it it set off a whole chain of different you know it just set off a whole franchise that's just phenomenal and i love it that's my number 10 I forgot about that one. That was a good one. That would have made my list if I thought of it. My oh, yeah. my number 10 is God of War, the uh, new one for PS4. Oh, my that God. Was... Speaking of forgotten games. <laughs> yeah. That had great story. I wish there was more uh, combat. There was a lot of puzzles in it, which are okay. But I wish there was more combat and more story, more dialogue. I feel like they kind of uh, pushed away from the dialogue, which is why it's it's still a great game. But why it got only 10 is it could have used more cutscenes, more dialogue. But God of War, Honestly, still a great game. It's my number 10. That's a phenomenal game. And it, it kind of rejuvenated the series a little bit, too, because it was... You know, a lot of people were not going to be sure of how that was going to go because it's like oh, this is just going to be some sort of crap with, with you know, his son. And it, there was a lot of people judging that, going hardcore into it. Like, <laughs> we kind of did that first. We called it Dad of War, thinking, I, I what think is this going to be about? 
But, <laughs> but it ended up redeeming itself, so it was good. It was a so, great game. I'll say it gets my number 10 on the uh, top 10 of the decade. I put it on my list, but I should have. And now that I'm thinking, uh, honorable mention, I'll throw it on there. <laughs> <laughs> and now, your number 9. My number 9. Uh, you, I mean, okay, take this with... Take this as if... I'm just going to say, I know you're not going to agree with me. I say Friday the 13th was my number nine. And uh, I, I know it's, it's a glitch fest and there's lots of things that are wrong. <laughs> but, the, you know, the core mechanics of the game and getting that whole experience of, uh, you know, it actually it's, it's, it's got people interested in the franchise again. Number and number two, it is still some of my best gaming moments of this decade were just being having Jason's music come and then out of nowhere, someone who's better than me at the game, just like, you know, coming up and yeeting me across the freaking <laughs> map and like <laughs> that yeah. intensity. For, so for that reason, I freaking loved it. And uh, that, that's that's my number nine right there is the Friday nothing, the 13th. Nothing beat that game. Then when it first came out, no one knew what was going on. It was brand new to everyone. And you're in the game. Jason shows up. You're scared. It's like, holy crap, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what I'm doing. You're running away, but Jason's still not a great player. You don't have those try-hard peoples. So you're able to get away from him, but he won't leave you alone. The whole game, you're chasing, and you feel satisfied because you're getting away, but he won't let off, and you're just scared. For 20 minutes, your heart is pounding. I love that about Friday. Now it's nothing like that, unfortunately. Yeah, for shell of its former self. That's kind of how it was a little bit on Switch when it launched, because everybody was on the same playing field. Even though, you know, we were coming myself, everybody was level one. So it was like, you didn't have the perks yet, you didn't have the skills. And I mean, granted, there was the updates that, you know, were missing. Like, I mean, there was the updates that were, you had the map icons, the things that you didn't have when the game launched initially, which made the game harder. I'd love to go back to that launch state and play it then. I really would. I think that would be fun. That'd be a lot of fun. But your number nine. So, my number nine is um, <clears throat> probably uh, dropped out. Uh, one of like one of the biggest games with the PS4 when it came out was Horizon Zero Dawn. This game, oh, yeah. yeah, it was. I fabulous. just started this. Recently. Oh, you did. You're in for. Yeah, a I finally got. I good was run. hesitant, but continue. <laughs> It has an amazing story, uh, amazing combat. I love all the different uh, bow and arrow. At first, I like using bow and arrow, so that pulled me in. And I love all the different kind of arrows you get. The uh, trap arrows, the uh, electric arrows, the blast on the shock arrows, take down the big things. I love the whole thing. I hate stealth games, but this game actually did it good. You get stealth armor where you can stealth through easily enough, and it's not all focused on stealth, where you can go, if you get caught, it's not game over. You can go and take them out and fight, and it's still, it's a whole lot of fun. I love the game from beginning to end. It was a great game. Yeah, watching my other half play it, I actually got me interested in wanting to play it, and now it's on PlayStation Now until April, so if you, you know, if you haven't played it, <laughs> now, PlayStation Now. Yeah, uh, now's yeah. the time. <laughs> and it's a great game, and I'm pretty sure two is gonna come launch with PlayStation Five. I'm, oh yeah, it's almost... definitely gonna launch on PlayStation Five. And the way they set it up, it's a perfect setup transition into two, and I can't wait. If two is as good as one, it's gonna be probably on my top ten again. And the game exceeded expectations. Let's just be honest; like a lot of people didn't know how that was gonna be, especially because it was, you know, it was competing. It was launching the same week as another big game, Legend of Zelda: Breath of the, uh, Breath of the Wild. <laughs> and uh, so, I mean, that it had some stiff competition, and it's held, held its own. So yeah, its sales were up there, and it got amazing ratings. Everyone loved it. So yeah, nice. that was my number I agree. nine. I, 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 that is that's a good game. That's a good one to have on the list. Yeah. For me, number eight, I have. I'm focusing on the online part, but because I haven't played this, I really haven't played this story. But we're talking about GTA Online, GTA Five. I'm mostly focusing on the online because that is its own thing. That's like there's the whole GTA Five game, but then there's the online universe that has all this other stuff going on, and they're constantly expanding it. Instead of giving us GTA Six, they're like, we're just going to constantly update this game with you know all sorts of stuff now they have casino heist and all this crap like it's always constantly evolving and for a game that's now what seven years old <laughs> seven years it stayed you know consistent and stayed they uh, they didn't have to update it for seven years and here they've pushed so i mean it, it's it's earned its place for me and 
I was never really a GTA, a huge GTA fan, but this was the one that won me over. That was a good one. That was probably, like, I lost after Vice City. I dropped out of it. And then, like, San Andreas didn't care for, 4 didn't care for, 5 pulled me back, and I spent a lot of hours back in 5 again, but mostly the multiplayer. And, you know, one thing about it is there's an amazing clip on YouTube. You guys should all check it out. It's called World's Best Uber Driver. And uh, it's, you know, it, it, it's it's on the uh, Jester TRT channel, if you follow that guy on YouTube. And... <laughs> It's a it's a great video. A five star, please. It deserves a thumbs up for five star. <laughs> five star Uber service. <laughs> You're your number eight. <laughs> <laughs> My number eight. Um, I have, but from software. Going back, like most of mine have been newer, newer ones. This goes mm. back a long time, still in the decade, as Demon Souls, the first edition to the Soul series. Coming oh in, I would say <laughs> Bloodborne is my next. I really love Bloodborne, but I think Demon Souls takes my favorite of um, like all the Souls games. Next would definitely be Bloodborne, but this game it was it's tricky, it's rough, but it still has really good story. It wasn't um, like did you ever play them? I, I the you know I I want to. I really want to, but I feel like I keep hearing about how difficult they are and how you will throw your controller through the window. Oh, so my favorite, Demon Souls is 2009. My bad. So I meant Bloodborne is of this. Demon Souls is the first, but Bloodborne is of this decade. My favorite. You know, I, I think we'll allow it because 2009 kind of is 2010, if you think about it. Right? <laughs> yeah, but right? Bloodborne... <laughs> I do need to. I need to get into those. I need to play, but I keep hearing about like the difficulty, and I'm like, uh, the heck. Uh, Bloodborne was a fun game. Yeah, I have someone in the chat saying Bloodborne was a fun game, and Bloodborne. See, I like the Dark Souls games, but Bloodborne was a lot better than them. I think Bloodborne had more dark, more kind of a. Uh, you had to. Fi they didn't give you the story, but you had to figure out the story. So I liked the story a little bit more, and so there was that. But moving on to your number seven. Okay, so I unintentionally did. I didn't realize I did this until just now. I this was not planned, and I, I know you're not gonna believe me when I say this, but because you know how I am with numbers and things. Like when huh. we were that one podcast seven. when we were talking so about seven, the twos and it was seven all about game. the twos and. <laughs> so let's but this see. Is, so my number seven, not planned. I swear to you. Resident Evil 7 <laughs> as my number 7. Nice. That was nice. not at all planned, but yes, <laughs> uh, it brought so much excitement to me because it was, uh, it, it, it took, uh, okay, you know, Resident Evil 7, we know going from around 4 forward was leaning more towards action, and then each game after that was going more down the action. 5, you know, kind of had some action and still had some of the horror elements six completely abandoned the you know the horror aspect for the most part but seven brought it back to life and then it took what like say like what pt did and i know that you love pt one of your huh. all-time huh. favorite games uh yeah it's on the list i'm bad. <laughs> it took it took what like pt did like that formula and it upped it and it's like resident evil 7 potentially is like the game that the new silent hill could have been and it was amazing. I loved it. Okay. Yeah, I can see that one. So, I have... It was hard, um, it was hard to not put Resident Evil 2 there. but Resident, Resident Evil 2 was a great one. But I didn't get it to the top. Because it was a remake. So I didn't want to put it on the list again. Although, since you're so we're talking about plan, completely unplanned either was um, Final Fantasy 7 as my number set. <laughs> no. No, I'm, I didn't put. See, we Final, both did that. No, no, mine's not. See, I, I Final say. Fantasy VII. They did come out. They re-released it and remastered it on the PlayStation Four in this decade, and that would be my number one. But I'm not including remakes, which is why Resident Evil Two is not on my list, and Final Fantasy VII Remastered didn't get put on my list for the remake next year. Uh, it's fair game, but this one remastered normally it would be number my number one because i love it but i'm not going to yeah. put it on my list you know, spoiler alert i don't have any remakes on my list either <laughs> yeah i figured it's 
better not to put them on. We'll do original games instead of going back. I didn't back even do back. that intentionally. I just didn't put any remakes. I couldn't think of any of them at the time. Mine was intentional. Final Fantasy VII originally was on my list, and I took it off to have just core games. <laughs> but real, for real, what is your number seven? For real, my number seven is The Witcher 3. And with oh, the Witcher nice. TV show out now, this game has shot up in popularity and fame. Oh, it's yeah. Big light yeah, shade, light shade, light shade on my Twitch right now. You talk about The Witcher, it's gonna blow up my chat with what? <laughs> oh my God, I'm gonna see nothing but The Witcher for the next ten seconds in my chat. Yeah, so. see, it's it's <laughs> sad that so many people have never played this game and they're just finding it, but at least they're finding it now. It's been out for a long time. Well, Game of the Year <laughs> before. Into your Witcher. <laughs> but yeah, touch it. Yes. But this game uh, deserves. I mean, it was a really solid, well put together, great yeah, I'm gonna, game. I'm going to make a bold it. prediction. Actually, I'm going to say uh, NPD numbers for Jan for December when they get released. I'm going to say that The Witcher Three is going to head back onto the top ten charts. Hmm. I can see that. Sold in December with the TV uh, that's show. That's my prediction. I think I think sales of the game are going to be upped from the show. So, ah, I could see it, it's, and it's I hope it does because it deserves it. I have, to, I have it on PC. I gotta play it yet, but uh, worth I, the I play. Have to get back to it. I have to get back. <laughs> but it's on my list. Your number six. All right, this is my number six. It's gonna be controversial, and maybe for the wrong reasons. But uh, Light Shade, can you do me a favor and press Y to honk? <laughs> I <laughs> know what six. it is. I already know what it <laughs> is. Untitled Goose Game. Let me tell you why. Not because uh, I was a great. I loved it. Um, for me, it proved that you know graphics don't always make a game. Like it's always about uh, <laughs> goddamn that goose. <laughs> but for me, you know, it was simple and it was simple enough that uh, the puzzles were good, and it was like it just literally proved to me that like a small indie game can be just as good as like a huge AAA title, and that there's so many different games in the gaming spectrum. That it doesn't always have to be about how you can, how you can make how you can make it be the most realistic. It still was fun, and then it's just so amazing to be an a-hole goose. I know I've said that in the past, but it's it's, it's my <laughs> spirit animal. A goose is my spirit animal. Moving on to your number six. <laughs> okay, I could see it. So, my number six is um, again a more of a newer one of the uh, games, but Final Fantasy fifteen came out probably what 2016 or something i remember when it first came out i wasn't i haven't been too excited about final fantasy for a while like uh 10 2 wasn't as eh. 10 uh final fantasy 13 1 2 and 3 were all i didn't like any of them so i was in hype for final fantasy then i was watching a trailer and this looked really good but i didn't know how it was until i actually played it and i loved it the story the characters Everything about it, the whole twist, the story twist that they do with all the old Final Fantasy games, how it pulls you in, and they do this big emotional twist. They did that perfectly, and the whole setup and everything about this was amazing. And then the whole lore of the game, how you got to figure things out that aren't really, like, you need to really pay attention to what's going on, so I'll give you little hints, and then you find out, wow, there's so much more to the story they put in than they actually put in the actual story. Amazing game. So I'm gonna make another quick bold prediction while we're talking about Final Fantasy. When we do this again in ten years, and uh, <laughs> when we're know, great. I'm just gonna say that your number one of of the next decade is gonna be Final Fantasy VII remake. <laughs> oh yeah, I can already <laughs> call my words it. Number, right now. <laughs> number one will be I can guarantee. So when we come back to this in January of 2030, Jesus, it seems like... so far away. It's going to be like, here, it's going to sneak, us, sneak up on us, though. Hell, when we do this again in 2021, doing the year recap, it's going to oh, be yeah. there. there that, that's, my, that's even my, my that's a, that's a safer prediction. Yeah. yeah but Because when, when, when Stadia takes off by 2030, of course. <laughs> but <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> another, but... another time for another day. Number five <laughs> we're talking about. Y'all going to be old as Yes, we will be old. Shut up. Yeah. Um, oh, we will be old. But moving on to number five for number five for you. Number five for me. Okay, uh, this is a this is a fun game. I love this game. It is Thimbleweed Park. Uh, for those of you, it's a point and click adventure game. For those of you who don't know, don't follow. It was like the follow up to Maniac Mansion: Day of the Tentacle. 
I love both of those games so, so, so much. And there's so many inside jokes that reference those two games, which is amazing. So it kind of some new people might not get the jokes, but if you were a fan of those other two games, you will definitely get the jokes. And you see like Sandy and Dave from like the Maniac Mansion working in a diner for God's sakes. And then there's a ridiculous <laughs> joke where you're, you're selling tubes and then like like circuit tubes and you're like, uh, what should I name this place? And one of the options is YouTube. And then the character's like, YouTube, oh, that'll probably never take off. And then, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, it's just so such stupid jokes like that, that it makes for an amazing, amazing game. I love it. You're number five. <laughs> Timbleweed, I do, I like that game. I still got to play it. That and Day of the Tentacle, those games, I've never played them. Oh, man. Spo I can't spoil it, but you got to see how it ends. Just Google the ending, and it's <laughs> hilarious. I'm going to. I'll have to look it up. My number five is a very cliche game. It's uh, generic and everything, and everyone's going to be like, oh, okay, called it. It's on, like, everyone's list. And that is Skyrim. Skyrim is Skyrim. just such a solid game, well Which built. Version? All of them. Uh, I'm guilty of buying it four different times. So uh, Alexa, play Skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> but I bought it on the PlayStation Three, got the platinum. I bought it on the PC, played it a lot. Bought it on the PlayStation Four, got the platinum again, and then I bought it for VR. So I bought it four different times, and I've enjoyed it and loved it every single time. So Skyrim, great story amazing open world it's the game that kind of pushed the pathway for open world rpgs it's amazing it's well built it has its glitches but they're funny glitches and yeah oh I, man you can't... and the mods on pc the mods are amazing there are a lot of good mods oh i still i still love the randy macho man randy savage mod that you... <laughs> there's and the dragon just goes flying. Go, oh yeah! And I'm just, I, I'm, I'm dead every time I see that mod. I'm like, God, that's yeah. amazing. Donkey puts a good little twist on the mods too. A little, oh, a God. crab with a monocle. That gone too yes. far. Yes. Master yes. Chief, a... let's get the fuck out of here. I'll have we so much of that. Flair, we also need a Ric Flair. We need a Flair mod. I, I, I need, I need my Skyrim people to be go woo. <laughs> I just need that in my life. Yeah. Skyrim's a good. I, I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. I I almost put it on my list, but it just narrowly missed it. So good game, great yeah, game, great Worth game. Buying four times. Buy it a fifth time. Get a switch and buy it a fifth time. <laughs> Probably might. But you're number four. <laughs> number four. Okay, this one I judged the hell out of when it came out, and I said this looks so stupid. Why on earth would anybody play this? Here I am, sixteen hmm. hours one night. Trying to get a trophy. Rubber band in my controller. Okay. We're talking I know about the game. Rocket League. I got so addicted to it. I did not expect in a million years that I would ever want to play a game that involved freaking little like RC type cars hitting a freaking soccer ball. Nothing about it on paper sounds good. But then when you play it, it is the most addicting thing on the planet. It is just it's fun. I love it. It's it's mindless fun and sometimes it gets intense. And I love it. It was what it ended up being one of my favorite games. I play it a lot now, and I'm, I'm addicted. My name is Shamrock, and I'm addicted to Rocket League. You're number four. <laughs> uh, see, Rocket League. That was I. I love that game, so I'm glad you played it, and I love going back to play it. But my number four is um, the Infamous series. I'm not going to put just one on. Ooh, if I had to. Yeah. If I had to, I would say number two is my favorite. But I loved Second Son significantly. It was such a great game. I loved the powers in Second Son. But two had great powers, great additions that one didn't have, an amazing story. I felt Second Son was great, but it didn't have the story pulling it that two mm. did. You felt attached to Cole. You love Cole. You All the story, the bad guys, everything. And then the end, the twist. I love twist endings. And that end, that twist, was such a great was, ending. Was Second Sun really the last one? They did um, First Light, I think it was called, after that one, which was a little mini stories that was a prequel to... So um, it was like a spinoff or something, or a prequel? Yeah, yeah. like a little spinoff. So we haven't had one since 2014, then. What yeah, year? it's been Do a for a, if, That's a game series I completely forgot about, because I, I, I just associate it with the last deck. First Infamous came out at the end of the last decade, and... Yeah. Second one kind of flew under the radar, so I, 
Oh yeah, that's that's one. We're we're way due for that. Yeah. And um, so I put the entire place, Infamous though. series. I, I don't want to pull clog it, putting one, two, three, and that. So I just put the entire series. That's a good choice. I have to revisit that one. Definitely. It Definitely was. revisit the series, but it's a good choice. Yeah, great game. I'll give you props there. And what number did we leave off on here? We're at number three. So number three. now we're getting into the intensity. Uh, for me, uh, Super Mario Odyssey took my number three. It was the the first real 3D Mario game we've got since Super Mario Sunshine, or not Sunshine, sorry, uh, my God, Galaxy, Super Mario Galaxy, Sunshine, Sunshine was crap, <laughs> but I mean yeah, Super Mario Galaxy, the first 3D game we got since Galaxy, and Galaxy, Galaxy 2 I almost put on my list, but I didn't, but because that came out at the beginning of the decade, but Super Mario Odyssey, man, it just brought... I, I loved throwing on that little hat and taking hmm. over people's bodies and it was just it 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 reminded me of why I was a Nintendo fan and why I'm <laughs> It sounds a little bit like a uh, possession going on there and you need Luigi's Mansion three to come and take care of them. Uh, no 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 <laughs> even though both games have possession we, we're not doing this again. We're not triggering me every week. No, we're not making a clip out of this every week. I had no. to find a way to bring it in. And when no. you brought possession the Facebook, up... The Facebook clip haunts me because I made a video of it advertising the episode. And then Facebook is like, do you want to sponsor this post? Here's what it will sound like. Every week it does. Every day it does that to me. Facebook is against me. Hey. You're number three, please. <laughs> my number three is should have been my number one. And I kind of still want to push it up farther. Maybe number two. I might do it, uh, but I'm going to leave it where it's at, is the Uncharted series as number three. Yes. I loved all of them, but I'm putting, I don't remember the two, yeah, they were all in the decade, I'm pretty sure. Maybe one uh, wasn't, but well, two I think was. Two Two was the tail end of last decade. Two came out in October of 2009, and then there was like the first DLCs for it, I think, came out in 2010. Uh, well, maybe it'll still the count. The multiplayer, I think, came out in 2010, or it was part of the game. I don't remember. But I but, put uh, the entire series on. If I can pick just one, again, just like Infamous, it would be number two is my all-time top favorite. But being is in the top decade, just like Demon Souls with the Souls games, um, Infamous with the Infamous games, and Uncharted, I'll put Uncharted 4 right there at the top. Two oh, is my all-time favorite. Okay. All right, that's a little four. controversial. I get it. I get it. Four was a great got- game. We got uh, we got the daughter taking over the series probably soon. If they I, continue I them, they might have ended it. If they do, I'm fine. I'll play as her. She's still I, I still like the whole. Yeah, I feel I I think that's what they they went to. Do. I know Nathan Drake's story is over because he's with. Uh, yeah, Elaine, Elena Fisher. Is it Elaine. Yeah. Elaine. I just want to check out the name right. Uh, yeah. And um, they had the daughter, and I feel like the daughter's gonna be. Give me a crossover game with Laura Croft. Let's make that happen. Let's do a Tomb Raider huh. Uncharted crossover. That could actually be really interesting if they work together and do that. That would be a really good kind of crossover. That, that could work. And especially, could you imagine Elaine getting jealous over in her triangles? I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there, there's some, there's some, I'll get back to that in a minute, but my number two. <laughs> Your number two. Because it ties into that. Uh, my number two is, I did this again. I did not want to do this again with numbers. Super Mario Maker 2. I don't know how I did this. <laughs> Super... the second time I've done this in the list. You um, mean but Super, Super Mario, Mario World 2. 2. Super Mario World, yes, of course. <laughs> no, uh, I, loved, I loved the first Mario Maker, but then, of course, I was all, I was clamoring for a second one for so long, and I, you know that. I was like, oh, it's, when's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? It happened. It exceeded all my expectations. I still play it. I have the most success on my streams playing Super Mario Maker 2. Shout out to any of my people who, you know, follow me because of Super Mario Maker 2. You guys are the best. And uh, those who come and come to my room and have fun with it, 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 it's made it's made Twitch streaming enjoyable for me. So that's one of the reasons I really love the game. But you're number two. My number two, which should have been my number three, actually, because I think Uncharted would probably be my number two. But this one's still an amazing game, and it belongs where it's at. My number two is the fallout series again fallout 3 came out uh 2000 what i don't remember seven i know it was a long time ago that one is light shade to talk about fallout 76 (laughs) fallout 76 is my all-time favorite no Uh, of course fallout series i loved all of them 
Three would probably be my all-time favorite. New Vegas was great, but for this decade, I'm putting Fallout Four as my favorite. Four? That's a good. I have to play that. Uh, it is on PlayStation Now, so yeah. I, know I keep hyping PlayStation Now. I just got PlayStation, now, so I keep saying that. But uh, Four was an I, amazing I game. It had a good story, like um, the Fallout games. They, I always like their story. It's a little. It's an open world, so it's hard to have a big story in the open worlds. But it had a good story that you can follow. Millions of side quests, not millions, but tons of side quests. A lot of campaigns. A lot of companions open world so much to explore so much to modify your weapons i actually a lot of people complain about it but i loved building the settlements that was probably my most favorite part of the game was building up all oh. of the settlements and well, getting people them. didn't like that then huh <laughs> i don't know why i love that part that was my that's i went back and just after i platinumed it spent hours just building every single settlement up all right. Speaking so of, now here's we have a settlement building. Mentions before we get to our number ones. Ah, yeah. The honorable so mention. For, for me, my honorable mentions, I'm just going to run through them. I'm not going to say yeah. anything about them, but uh, for, uh, I have Shovel Knight, great game. It kind of, you know, I'm, I'm not excited to say, reinvigorated platforming, made it indie games popular. Until Dawn, great game. Uh, one of yours I had on my honorable mentions, Horizon Zero Dawn. And I just, like I said, I just started playing it, so it might have been higher. I had it played <laughs> earlier. Two Point Hospital, loving the hell out of that. And Watch Dogs were my honorable mentions for the decade. Hmm. My honorable mentions are um, Destiny is an honorable mention, even though Shadow Destiny. Keep kind of, uh, yes. but Destiny is still, I love Destiny. Shadows of Mordor, an honorable mention. Great game. Stardew Valley. I have that now. Okay. Until Dawn. And Final Fantasy VII Remastered on the PlayStation 4. both had Until Dawn as honorable mentions. I did. I <laughs> loved Until Dawn. I love my story-based horror game. So Until Dawn's Before definitely... Before we get to our worst, we have our number ones. So my number one, which is kind of funny when you were just talking about your number three. My number one, I chose Uncharted 3 as my hmm. best game of the decade. Uncharted and that's 3. why I kind of held off on not saying anything too much about because I was like, Ooh, I can't spoil it. It's my number one. He's talking about it now, but it's my number one. Damn it. Shut up. <laughs> number one. See, I guess, when did Uncharted 3 come out? Uncharted 3 was 2012, 2011, 2012, around mm -hmm. there. Okay, so it just pushed it, its way it, it in. It did have a couple delays along the way. I loved Virgin. 3, but I think I like, my order definitely goes 2, 1, 4, 3. So 3 would be, I love 3. It, I love all of them, but three would probably be my least favorite of them all. I, I would say th my my order would be three, two, four, and then one. Hmm. I mean, I loved one, but then like everything after just was like it upped the ante so much. It did. So, although none of the games really stood out like as individuals, they all felt like a good continuation. But it was still each game. Also, even though they didn't stand out. Each game had brought something new to the thing where there was some sort of element that the previous game didn't have. Like from one to two, the combat changed slightly. You know, there was some sort of something, there was something slightly changed a little bit there, but you couldn't really pinpoint it. And then See, you know, where... three really gave us more backstory, yeah. which is what I really liked. And then four was like the perfect conclusion. So. Yeah, that's true. I did like that. Seeing young Drake as well with his brother. Yeah, that's why I really liked it, because then everything was tied together so nicely by the end of 4, and it just worked. What was your See, number one? Before, I loved The Last of Us, which is uh, Sony's, they did their game of the decade. They put The Last mm. of Us, and I loved that, but it did not match up to Uncharted, I feel. I feel Uncharted felt me, I felt more drawn into the story, more emotional, so yeah, mm. Uncharted's the way to go for Naughty Dogs. But my number one is a game... Speaking of leaving emotional, this game left. It was such a great game. Such a, it was like three games built in one. When you beat the game and then you go back, uh -huh. it was near Automata. I had a feeling I should have. I should have said that in chat. I should have said because I said, <laughs> I know what I feel like is gonna be. <laughs> yeah. See, because I that loved. was your number one game last year too. I think. Yeah, I think it was when I, we did the. Yes. But yeah, I love this game. Loved every bit of it. They, I, well, first off, Taro Yoko, Yoko Taro, he does amazing games. He's really good at his story. So his story, right from the 
pulls you in, draws you, attaches to the character, the story, the big twist. I, I keep saying this, but I love twists. I love twists in the stories, love twist endings. I love them, and he does them great. So I love the whole time. The whole combat, I love the way you can... I like fast-paced combat, so I loved getting in there, slashing, going through, doing all these epic combos, taking on huge groups of enemies really fast, and just having all these, these powers and the story... Everything about it, I loved. And his first game, N Near Ger Gerald, I forget what it was called. That was a great game too, but I liked Automata all so much more. It was such a great game, and I can't wait for him to see the next Near game that he has come out. I, you know what? I was gonna say something. I was gonna say something about that, and I cannot remember for the life of me. What it was I still haven't played it yet? I know I, I'm kind of I'm slack. I'm slacking here. <laughs> yeah. I'm really slacking. But you got it. it I definitely mine. need to play that. And uh, one of my all-time favorites right here. I feel like it also flew under the radar as far as like. I, I feel like as far as hype and everything, I feel like it kind of flew under the radar. But I could be wrong. Yeah, I guess a little bit because not a whole lot of people follow this series. But it sold incredibly well, and it still did really. It did great. Oh, you know what? I would probably like it because it's the same people the develop platinum didn't know platinum developed it yeah so they do bayonetta and mm -hmm. astral chain which was surprisingly good so uh platinum really knows their hack and slash so i could see i could see why you put that as number one <laughs> platinum is pretty yeah. good with that <clears throat> yeah it's a great game so did you make a worse list that we could wrap up with? Because yeah. we are running out of time. Oh, what so time do we... Oh, yeah, that did take us yeah, a We're a little over time, but... So we'll just go through this. We won't talk about it a whole lot. We'll just go through and um, just mention our top ten, so our top five. So do you want to do it back and forth, or do you just want to do your top five? I'll do my top five. I, I, we'll just do... We need to reveal our top five. And okay. And then uh, I'll... Because to save time here, so yeah. I say I'll go my okay my top five worst of the decade. Get ready for this. Number five, Nickelodeon Kart Racers, complete garbage. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you, you can't. You, how can you mess up a kart racer so bad? Just, just don't play it. Never Number heard four, of it. Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. I I don't even like Animal Crossing to begin with, but Oof. you want to talk about uh, this was literally the, the example of like, hey, you know. Let's just sell you a. This was the reason to try to sell amiibo that people didn't want because no one wanted the Animal Crossing amiibo. Epic failure. Uh, <laughs> number three for me, Devil's Third. So much potential, but oh god, what the hell? Making it exclusive to the Wii U and then it just being a bad game. No, 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 go for it. Number two, this is controversial. I'm gonna say it. Red Dead Redemption Two. Sorry, I hmm. it didn't, didn't tick my boxes. Uh, and then number one, I'm not even picking one game for this. I'm taking them all. WWE 2K series from 2K14 to 2K20. Every 2K WWE game has been absolute trash, glitch fest, complete hot mess, and nothing redeeming about them. You want to see some fun? Watch a WWE 2K20 glitch video and you will have the time of your life. <laughs> huh. But those are my top five worst of the decade. Okay, so I'm going to jump on my top five worst games of the decade where um I lost them here. All right, so Shadow Keep, Destiny 2 Shadow Keep was up there because, oh man, everything that was good that I liked about yeah. Destiny, they went and crapped on it with uh, Shadow Keep. Like, they give you everything. It's It's kind of an insult to anyone who played the game right on launch and was a big fan of it. They kind of crapped all over them because it's like all that hard work and money you put into playing your game, we're going to take that all away, make it mean nothing, and we're going to give it to all these other new players for free. So crapped hmm. on us. Don't like it. They ruined it. Next one was Anthem. Yeah. Anthem. Anthem had such a big hype around it. Turned out to be a boring crap fest. It, sh it was... They everything And every time they tried to put something fun out, they just completely ruined it and made it completely boring. Bad game. I agree. I, I almost put Anthem on my list, but I, I felt it suffered enough, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the next one, uh, Battlefront 2. 
It was oh, had potential. Wow. Battlefront 1 and 2, actually. I'm going to put both of them because I didn't like either one. They took everything that was fun about Battlefront and they took it out. And all it did was make it a Call of Duty with Star Wars characters. Everything that was fun about the original was... Um, the uh, Galactic Conquest, going over, taking over the planets, having those all-out wars, trying to take over the whole map, and they took that out. The only, like, the best thing that they had, and then they made it so you just pay to win. Call of Duty pay to win. Didn't true. work it. Uh, true. Uh, number four was of... Uh, number two, right? Oh, yeah, number two. I forgot, we're counting down... I had another one here, but I forgot what it was. So I'm putting Mass Effect Andromeda. No other reason than it was just glitchy and it didn't follow the good uh, story of Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3. 3, eh, but the other ones, it didn't have as great of a story or a kick. I thought Androm Andromeda suffered enough as well, so I didn't put it on my dis list. I was going to, <laughs> but it suffered enough. Just yeah. like Anthem, suffered enough. <laughs> I did have another game for here, but I didn't write it down and I forgot it. So this is just one that just popped up right now. I just thought of it. Uh, I did have another game for number four, but I don't want to waste time thinking of it. My number one all-time worst game of the decade. It's a total crap fest. It doesn't even deserve to be a real game anymore. They should just take it out. Battlefield 5. Dice, EA, you guys crap the bed here. Destroy this game. Get rid of it. Burn it. Never make another Battlefield again. <laughs> Throw it in the landfill with E.T., man. <laughs> <laughs> it is a glitch fest you play the camp first off the campaign is about four hours to complete it there's no work put into it they copy and paste any other campaign they did just to take as little work as they can actually put in this game there's no work done here the campaign is boring no <laughs> like stories the story sucks the people suck the everything about it sucks. Don't like it. It's a glitch fest. I was running around and the map just disappears. You're running on thin air. Uh, there's the textures fade away and it turns into sand and crude sand and just flat, like gray flat. This sounds like a good game. I don't know what you're talking <laughs> The NPCs, there's a guy sniping in a tower and he just falls through the tower and gets stuck in one of the two by fours <laughs> midair. Another guy just starts walking and then he just flies off into space. Do There's you still have glitches. This game? Please do a glitch video. Oh, I have all these video clips. I will do a glitch video because I saved every one of these video uh, these yes, things I talked do it. about. We will post it to Facebook. <laughs> I'm driving a car and the road just disappears <laughs> and I go down and crash into this ditch and I'm like, what the hell is going on here? I do love glitches though. I'm not gonna lie. I love I love laughing. I'm just sorry, but it's, it's but terrible. The but true. Thing that made this the worst game of all, I'll go into really fast, was uh Beyond all of this was DICE and EA, they crapped on their trophy list and they refused to fix it. First, they took one of the trophies that you need to get to get the Platinum. They took it completely out of the game altogether. They took a map that you had to play. They took it out of the map, the game, and they don't care. Uh, they glitched their trophies. You have to grind out 100,000 points in each class. They put a patch out that uh, it was reset all of everyone's progress your progress is still there but it reset for the trophy so i had a hundred thousand for every character didn't get the trophy found out they put a patch out to reset all your progress and it's like who does that why would you screw your fans for playing your game over terrible game they did it because they wanted to annoy you <laughs> so they're like we are going to do whatever we can to yeah well i tried to sum that up really quick because we're way over a time limit so yeah, that's why i've been talking really fast other topics because we're going to discuss the ps5 logo i don't know if you want to mention anything about it it's please, but uh, yeah, it's another episode if we want but it's innovative yeah. it's revolutionary it's <laughs> wait until you guys see it it's something you've <laughs> never seen done in gaming before yes that logo was a uh, the the reveal of it alone it's just uh, groundbreaking i mean really uh <laughs> No, don't leave. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> We're over our time. I mean, we might just bull BS after the show, but... Yeah, uh, but with but, that, yeah. I'm going to end our podcast here. Thank you for tuning in, checking out our review of the decade, and we'll see you again on the next episode, on episode 38. Until oh, then, yeah. check us out on Facebook and Twitch. Peace and out, peoples. Outro clip. <laughs>